Welcome to The Wiz Says. I am The Wiz. Now, today's movie that we're watching is a documentary from 2011. There's only really three ways you've probably heard of this movie. Uh, either you're really, really, really into dance choreography. Uh, you are a big fan of the director Vim Vonders. Or you are a fan of the Criterion Collection. This movie that we're watching is a documentary from 2011 directed by Vim Vonders called Pina. Uh, Pina is about um, the choreographer Pina Brausch, which uh, is one of the most well-known choreographers that have ever lived. Um, Pina was a uh, what was considered to be a revolutionary uh, dance choreographer in classical dancing. The director, Vim Vonders, uh, just loved her work. Uh, her work was also uh, shown in the 2001 Alma Vidar movie, Talk to Her. Uh, unfortunately, uh, before they started shooting the film that he was originally intending to do, uh, Peanut Brush died. And this turned into a documentary that highlighted some of her best work. This film is interesting if you have an open mind to it. It's actually quite a good-looking film. It uses not only uh, the state, I guess it's, it's the stage that the uh, that, that Peanut Brush used. I'm not, sh I'm not really sure about that, so don't take that the gospel with me. They also use a lot of outdoor and a lot of different types of locations uh, to uh, do some of the dances. And this, in effect, gives this nice, uh, really, really different looking type of dance movie. Uh, it's meant to be more artistic, and it's meant to be uh, a lot more of a deeper film aside from just people dancing. But if you even take it, take all the artistic stuff on the outside, it is a very good looking film. Uh, lighting is spectacular in the film. Um, the use of locations, the use of the the use of the dances in those locations are very well done, which should be a surprise because the person that uh, Pina Brosh is, her dance they, they talk about in the movie, her dances element use space as a main element most times in most in, the, in most of her productions. So that was captured pr pretty well in the movie. Uh, why else would you be interested in it? Well, it is an interesting look at basically how, about a person's creation. If you are interested in anybody about creating anything, uh, this movie is interesting to see in a, in a specific light. I read a little after I watched the movie, and it seems like if you are really into dance and you know about Peanut Brush and you know about uh, a lot of dance choreographers or famous dance choreographers, it may not be the movie for you because you'll either go, oh, I've seen this before, or duh, and be bored. Or you might just look and say, oh, these are pretty. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, it's definitely to give people uh, an element to see exactly it, how it would be to want to work at this level and to work with somebody who is as creative and as revolutionary as Pina Barish was. But that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, really, to ask somebody that is not interested in dance, that is not interested in dance choreography, and just look at some really good looking set pieces of people dancing if you're not into dance choreography. So does the movie kind of bridge that gap into probably getting somebody to be interested in that world. Yes and no. It is a movie that, for I think people who enjoy art in itself, would actually appreciate and would actually kind of like. I had one issue with the film, and the film was trying to be both a remembrance of the person, Pena Brush, and a remembrance of her work. There's very little about the person in this movie, and, too, and a lot about her work. So I kind of felt at the end, the things that felt most out of place are the things about the per about Pina Brush. 
Which, I think it would have been a much more interesting film if you would just have like a, a 30 second to a minute thing about this is the work of Pina Broche. She died in 2011, uh, just 2008. I'm not sure what, when she died. And this is her work. And then just 90 minutes of the work and go from there. I think uh, that would have been a lot more interesting and I think a lot more of a, of a film that people could look at and go, well, can take something out of it that they want. When you have interviews and you have the people, the, the people who are dancing talking about and putting their impressions of this person, it's hard to let the art itself speak for itself when you are being told, maybe not exactly how to interpret that art, but just how this person thinks and how this person does her job. I think it, it kind of hurts itself just by having these different types of people come, just have these different types of interpretations or just have their own, just to have their own feelings and thoughts of the person itself. I understand why they would do that. Like in the documentary, when you're trying to get to know and talk to, about a certain subject, you want to get a lot of people who are actually intelligent and actually know about the subject being talked about. In this case, however, I feel like it would have been more interesting just to let the work speak for itself than to have other people speak about the work that you are noticing on your, that you're watching on your own. For most of us, for the very first time, unless you saw Talk to Her, which then you will know that Cafe Muller uh, piece in the film that is also actually pretty. For this review, uh, my name is The Wiz. This is The Wiz Says. If you like the video, press a like on it. If you want to comment, comment down here. Subscribe. I still haven't checked which one it's in which corner. I don't know. You could be on any device watching this. All the ten of you. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I would appreciate comments, likes, and subscribes. Uh, if you have comments on the work, or if you have any comments about the movie itself, lay them down there. Let's see what you think. I am The Wiz, this is The Wiz Says, and tune in next time to find out what The Wiz says next.